Experience the difference at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From the GMC Acadia to the Buick Encore, we're sure to have a vehicle that fits your lifestyle. Our climate-controlled showroom guarantees a comfortable shopping experience every time you visit. Plus, our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. You will leave our lot feeling comfortable and confident in your new vehicle. Start your car buying journey today, in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. We are live. Welcome to the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast. I am your host, Chris Kirkwood. Screen name Kirk D's here with my co-host, my boy, the a little under the weather this week. Um, you know, from uh, from from his booster shot apparently. So he scared me to get a booster shot, but uh, glad he could uh, muscle up here and, and and take on this pod. We're doing it a little bit later in the week. We're recording on Saturday morning. But Brian, how you feeling? First of all, and uh, what's going on? Good, man. I've been upgraded to probable after being listed questionable for the last couple of days. So uh, I'm good to go. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to talk some NFL with you. Yeah, I didn't know who we were going to have to, if uh, we were going to have to scrap the scrap the pot or if I was going to have to um, pull up somebody from the practice squad. But uh, <laughs> we, we're good to go here. So um, week 11, um, we uh, got a pretty decent slate a ton of news i would say that's been uh breaking the, you know some things shattered yesterday we'll talk about with uh amari cooper being out uh camara's out again um there's just uh injuries all over the place and what has been a pretty weird season um but uh, let's get take care of some housekeeping first of all um this is a uh, presented by yahoo um yahoo is the place to play if you're listening to this you probably already know that but um but they have the the best tournament in the industry in my opinion by far it's the twenty dollar baller one million dollar baller twenty dollar entry pardon me and uh with 200k overlay and i say this every week so if you look up at management fee it shows you right there on the screen uh negative 25 percent so yahoo is losing 25 percent they're just kicking in two hundred thousand dollars of their own money in this contest every week um so uh, we should be playing that one as, as your first tournament. Um, plus, there's always lower rake anyway. There's overlay to be had in so many different contests there. Um, new this year, they've done the single game NFL slates, Monday, Thursday, and Sunday night football. I've been playing pretty much every single one of them. Uh, I actually enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, they've got a, a lot going on. The new live final, which I haven't qualified for, but hopefully we'll, we'll get in there. But, um, anyways, uh, if you haven't signed up with Yahoo already and you're itching to play because we're going to give you all the plays, Use promo code GRINDERS25 for a free $25 bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's GRINDERS25, uh, and uh, Yahoo will take care of you. All right, week 11, 12 games this week, uh, three with 50-point or higher totals, one with a massively high total that's probably going to get a ton of ownership, which is the Chiefs against the Cowboys. The Chiefs finally. Um, you know, played pretty well last week and had a decent game. I actually literally, when the the slate ended at seven o'clock, I hopped in my car and drove to the New Hampshire border to put a bet in uh, on the Chiefs. So I, I won and hammered that one. I thought it was just, I thought there was no way they weren't going to show up. And uh, I got lucky and they, they, they won. So that was, a, that was good. That kind of saved my weekend because on Yahoo, uh, had a had a kind of a tough week. Um, I, I kind of skipped over that actually. So my, I, I made a few decisions last week that, that hurt me. I was literally like all set to just play the chalk lineup and just, just put Ramondre over Mark Ingram. And uh, I ended up not doing that, even though I loved Ramondre Stevenson, but I, so I played him heavily in the baller instead and uh, which that kind of saved me, but man, that would have been all I needed for the main lineup. Uh, instead, I, I went up and paid up for Dalvin Cook. I faded Ingram. We got that touchdown late, which was kind of tilting. And then, uh, oh, and I played Mike Williams and uh, Herbert. So I never had a – even if I thought I had a chance all day, I never had a chance uh, once those <laughs> four o'clock games. But uh, I, you, did, you did pretty well on Yahoo. So uh, how was your week overall? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I actually had my highest return of the season on Yahoo. And again, I'm, I'm only playing for my, my bankroll challenge over there where I started with $0 to start the year. And I'm now just over 900 bucks from zero trying to get to the 10 K mark. I don't know if I will, but, uh, but yeah, last week it was one main lineup that, that kind of did it for me and finished in the top, you know, top 0.5% in most of the contests that it played. And, uh, yeah, just looking to build on that this week. I think there's some good games to get to it. Yep. So like I was saying, uh, the three, Three fifty-point or higher total games. Dallas and KC is the one that's the that stands out with a fifty-six point total. Um, from there, we right under it, we've got the Bengals and Raiders at fifty and a half point total. I think that game could be pretty interesting. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if it if it's kind of uh, goes off or if it uh, underperforms, but either way, but it's a game I definitely want exposure to. Uh, then you got the Colts Bills game. Bills minus seven with a fifty-point total. Then there's a couple of teams that, you know, have great, great matchups, you know, on, on their their end with uh, high team totals. And that would be the Browns as their massive favorites over the Lions and the Titans, who are massive favorites over the Texans, both with uh, over 27 point team totals. A um, couple of up and pace games or actually three of them. You know, I always go and I check the blitz for most game plays. And then I uh, cross reference that with uh, Thorman's article over at Establish the Run and uh on up and pace and so they 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 match again which is what they always do but it's uh dallas kc uh most plays in the blitz then behind that it's the seattle arizona game which it'll be interesting to get your take on because i i mean man but seattle just really was disgusting last week with uh-huh. russ's first game back russ was I and mean, that game was just a total bust i thought it was going to be pretty good um and then we've got miami jets for the third most plays so um those are pretty much the the high paced games then uh we've got a bunch of other options but overall how's this slate looking to you brian yeah so obviously i think everyone's going to gravitate towards the cowboys and chiefs game and rightfully so with the pace like you mentioned uh with the high total kansas city coming back to life last week good work driving across the border you always know that's a degenerate move to drive across the border to get a bet in so good work doing no that. And, and and not only that i had to like speed uh, <laughs> i had to go like 90 down there just to get there in time that was a hell of a bet then you must have had a lot of conviction to, to make to make that uh to make that so um but yeah the, so you mentioned a couple of the other games i, I like the the Bengals and raiders game as well um, Seattle and Arizona is, is super gross to me, especially with Pete Carroll saying they need to run the ball more, which is always the solution for them. And uh, that Miami and Jets game keeps popping up to me. And uh, I imagine if you fast forward to the end of the show, uh, that'll be my gross stack of the week. But I'm trying to find ways not to play it. But there are some good options in that game. It should be fast paced. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if it finishes like 17 to 13. And I just hate myself for even considering it. Yeah, and I you it can't be too gross. You're not looking at uh Flacco, are you? Uh I I plead the oh, fifth. No. Oh no, <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, so that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. Um all right, so starting off at quarterback. Um I wrote, you know, what we typically do, we go each position, uh we do our top value plays, then our main preferred plays. Sometimes there's some overlap there, and then we uh do that for each of the positions. So we'll take that over to wide receiver after quarterbacks and we'll go to running backs and uh, bring it home with tight ends and then some stacks, but um, top values right away. This is a, I don't really like this, the the value range too much. I think I'm probably going to end up being going to the top, but um, certainly for the baller and GBPs, uh, I will have some exposure to some of these guys that I'm about to mention, but I said my top value, this is gross. Um, Jimmy G. Um, $23, um, played pretty well last week, um, playing Jacksonville, um, decent seven point favorites. They are on the road. Jacksonville is 31st DVOA versus the pass. Their passing game is getting healthier, right? Like that's, that's what stands out to me here. It's that, you know, Kittle looks amazing. Um, so, uh, when we get the tight ends, I'm definitely going to like him. Uh, Ayuk is back, right? Like he's, he's, he's actually getting involved. He looks good. Um, and uh, Debo Samuel has just been an absolute beast. Uh, there are some running game issues. You know, Elijah Mich- Mitchell um, being ruled out after they were touting all week that he was going to play with a, a pin in his uh, hand, but um, that's not the case. So uh, it looks like it's going to be Jeff Wilson as the, the running back uh, value play of the week. But 
um, it, you know, it may make them lean a little bit more on their passing game. You know, they're not a huge passing, passing team, but the matchup is right. Um, he's got all his healthy weapons. So I, I can get behind some Jimmy G. Um, other than that, Justin Fields uh, kind of stands out on the cheap, cheap end for twenty twenty one dollars uh, first off, their 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 defense is uh, is banged up. You know, it's getting getting worse and worse by the day. Uh, this is kind of a, a what could be a decent game with a lot of plays against the Ravens, whose defense hasn't been the best this season. Um, the thing, Justin Fields is finally running again, right? So um, he had eight and then ten rushing attempts in his last two games. Um, the problem is Baltimore ranks second in rushing yards versus versus opponent opponent QBs, so they haven't been giving up much production. I didn't really dig in deeper to see if they which run, rushing quarterbacks they've played or anything, but that did stand out to me. But Baltimore is 24th DVOA versus the pass. Uh, they just lost Allen Robinson, um, so there should be some cheaper pairings, I guess. At least you know you could always use Komet. You could use um, uh, Mooney. Um, so I don't know. Fields would be my other guy for the cheap end. And one more I wrote down as an honorable mention, which is going to be the game that you already kind of alluded to that you like. Tua, Tua is my guy at $25 in this range is who I probably feel the best. And that's just basically on based off of matchup. Um, I would I would start head chopper versus the Jets. So. <laughs> um, those are my cheapies. What do you got? Uh, yeah, it's a rough range this week. and. Uh, fortunately we have enough running back value and there's some cheaper receivers that I don't think we have to go down and play a value quarterback in most contests, uh, especially not in our main lineups. So I, yeah, I, I agree. I think Jimmy G is probably the safest of value down there. Fields probably offers the most upside and uh, Allen Robinson being out is probably helpful because then we don't have to waste any allocation in our tournament lineups with Allen Robinson, right? We can just, we could play some of the cheaper guys and not have to worry about just burning money playing Robinson. So I think fields, yeah, 20 bucks, running more, like you said, certainly probably the most upside. And I do like both quarterbacks, actually, from that that Jets game, Tua and Flacco. But again, I don't think this is a week where you have to pay down a, a quarterback. We have enough value elsewhere. So then, to me, Chris, the, the conversation becomes, which stud quarterback do we like the most for our main lineups? And to me, I'm debating between Mahomes in the highest total game and Lamar, who always offers a ton of floor ceiling combination so i'm curious to get uh your thoughts on where you're leaning yeah so it's tough so i wrote down all three of the big the, the big guns so I, I i put lamar first then mahomes second um and you know lamar's 37 dollars. mahomes is 36 uh and then josh allen is 41 it kind of makes it a little harder to play josh allen this week um and you know indy is somewhat of a, a decent defense and uh so that that matchup is a little bit tougher, but um, man, so it's like I've been I've been struggling with this decision. So the so the thing is, Chicago does doesn't give up much uh, production to Russian quarterbacks. Uh, the Bears are 19 in DVOA versus the pass. Um, you know, the thing about Lamar is he's just he's it's been the touchdowns that have held him back, right? He's on pace for career high rushing yards. So he's, he's rushing more, more actual yardage than we've ever seen him and 63 more passing yards per game than any time in the past, but the touchdowns haven't been there. And he's been in some, some tough, tough game situations or some, you know, when they, when uh, that one game that stands out to me where Devon, every running back on the team scored and, and Lamar didn't score. So, you know, that hurts. And then I am a little bit worried about this game. Uh, the Ravens have jumped up two points in total um, favorite, which could be good, but it could be that this is a game where they don't have to lean on Lamar that much once they have it in hand. Cause I do worry about Chicago's ability to score in this spot. Um, so I could see myself being like, okay, let's say I decide to not go with Lamar and I end up playing Mahomes, And then I can see myself kicking my, you know, just being upset at myself being like Lamar was always the play. You know, when he, he scores two or three rushing touchdowns or he's passing at will in this team and, and, and goes off and you get the rushing upside and Mahomes kind of underwhelms a little bit or, or vice versa. I could totally see that, you know, if I play Lamar and Lamar, you know, the game 
struggles to, to put up a bunch of points. Uh, Chicago doesn't really do anything, and it's kind of an easy week, and Lamar doesn't have that much production. And then Mahomes goes off in a barn burner that goes back and forth like everyone's expecting with the, the massive total, and then I'm kicking myself, well, why didn't I just play – the passing the guy the passing QB with uh, elite elite two wep, two elite weapons in a game that's like the marquee game of the week and I decided to fade it right so it's like it's I I don't this is Saturday morning today and I don't have any conviction on one versus the other at this point it's tough man it's tough and I, I will say maybe the edge in Lamar's favor is that Chicago they're still missing and, and now even more defensive pieces right Khalil Mack's still out Akeem Hicks is going to be out uh potentially Eddie Jackson's out so that that always helps his case but I think you know to break a tie for the main preferred lineup to go with a game in a 57 point total that's supposed to be close um can always we, we've seen this before right can always blow out one way or the other but uh Mahomes and the, the fact that I don't think Dallas is going to change their defense too much to, to try to copy what these other teams have been trying to do to slow down the Chiefs passing game, which I think should help them tremendously. So I think, that, yeah, the, the choice is between those two guys. Um, and I really don't think you can go wrong with either. But to me, Chris, the, the, the real interesting uh, situations are in tournaments because you get you can go to Dak on the other side of that game who will get lower ownership that that Vegas Cincinnati game we both like uh Joe Burrow Derek Carr I think offer a ton of upside I think there are a lot of ways because the field is going to concentrate on a couple of quarterbacks all these other guys are going to be sub 10 percent I think they offer a ton of upside yeah and then we also have I mean is Kyler Murray going to end up playing Mm, true and if Kyler Murray ends up playing like the price at 34 is much more reasonable now um and then there's uh, Tannehill, right? Like with uh, without, you know, they're they're even more depleted at the running back um, position this week, and looks like a smash spot for AJ Brown, right? So yeah. I think how I'm going to determine the Lamar versus Mahomes for my main lineup, it's going to be who do it's like it's going to be who do I put the priority on at wide receiver because I'm probably going to be paying up for one wide receiver, right? So is it going to be Devonte Adams or is it going to be Tyreek Hill? True. And so, I because if I play Mahomes, I'm going to want to stack him. Or, or you know, I could could go with Kelsey uh, at the tight end position. But it's going to be, do I want to favor one of those guys? And if I don't, then I'm probably just going to have to take the the the, the safer rushing uh, upside route with Lamar, and then uh, you know, and play him naked. Or I could play him with uh, Mark Andrews or or Hollywood or whoever. But um, you know, naked Lamar would be fine for me. But for GPPs, you're right. I mean, there those there's going to be so much ownership, you know, um, put on Mahomes, Allen, Lamar that like guys like right right below him, Joe Burrow, Tua, uh, even Derek Carr. Um, you know, like you said, Dak. Like all of these guys um, aren't going to be as owned as they should be. So um, it should make sense to to put a higher weighting on those guys and uh, try to try to separate yourself here. Agree. Totally agree. Um, any other guys that, that we haven't mentioned that you like for tournaments? Um, I don't really like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the lower range is so gross. And then I think there are a couple of key games that, you know, are all for the easiest spots at quarterback. So I don't know if you need to get too, too different there. I think I think I end at Dak. I don't really want to play Jalen Hurts. Um, maybe I play some of him. Yeah, I just I don't maybe, I don't think you need to anymore because I mean yeah, they're maybe, they're obsessed with running the ball, so let them keep running and we'll uh, we'll play other quarterbacks. Maybe Aaron Rodgers, um, but that's just going to come with with Devonte anyway. So, I mean that I will have some Aaron Rodgers, but yeah, I don't think uh, I mean, we need to get lower because like that range is pretty pretty stacked. I think there's a lot of upside in Joe Burrow to a. Uh, uh, Kyler, if he plays Tannehill, um, you know, who certainly could, could rush for a, a touchdown or two in this game himself. Um, I just, I mean, it's just such a nice matchup against Houston that I, I really think that uh, Tannehill could pay off this week. Um, all right. Yeah, let's let's take it over to wide receiver. Um, top values. We do have uh, some, some decent value plays here, and I'm going to have a lot of them. Um, T. Higgins is $15. Everyone played him last week. I didn't but um, I was wondering if I should have, um, but you know, it's just, you get great usage, right? Like the things here, um, five games without a touchdown, right? Like uh, touchdown positive regression should be 
coming because, you know, the usage is, is there. Joe Burrow is passing more and more and more every single week. This game is a sneaky, sneaky game to shoot out a little bit with the, the Raiders. So um, I like that. Uh, on the other side of that same game for value at $15 is you can, you know, the old reliable uh, Hunter Renfro uh, for 15 bucks. Um, you know, now that Ruggs is gone, there's just even more targets up for grabs. But like he's always been consistent with the targets, like um, pretty much uh, five to nine targets each week, like somewhere in that range you can count on. Um, TDs in each of his last two games. Um, so they do look uh, his way in the in the end zone. Um, and uh, Darren Waller has just been missing. Uh, no idea what's been going on with him. But um, and then one more for $16 is, you know, Jalen Waddell, um, you know, a really talented uh, receiver who's getting more familiar with Tua each week. Their, their passing game uh, with Tua should be okay, but it's the Jets, right? 32nd DVOA versus the pass. Teams can do whatever they want against uh, this defense. Um, Experience the difference at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From the GMC Acadia to the Buick Encore, we're sure to have a vehicle that fits your lifestyle. Our climate-controlled showroom guarantees a comfortable shopping experience every time you visit. Plus, our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. You will leave our lot feeling comfortable and confident in your new vehicle. Start your car buying journey today, in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. And uh, in Waddle's uh, four starts with Tua, um, 37 targets. So we're looking at about nine targets uh, a game there. So for 16 bucks, I'll take that. He's also in those games, had three touchdowns and should continue to get better and better each week. And Parker is still out. Those are my cheap values. What do you got? Yeah, so Waddle for sure, and we always see rookies typically perform better in the second half of their rookie year than the first half, so that should should mean good things for Waddle. Uh, T. Higgins, yep, I agree with him. Uh, Hunter Renfro, yep, I agree with him. And then there are a couple other guys that either have some sort of narrative or, or teammate absence that boost them as well. So Jarvis Landry, they're talking about they need to get him the ball more. His target share has been great, but they've just had some really weird great game scripts the past couple of weeks. Landry's due for a big game. Uh, Darnell Mooney, without Allen Robinson now, he should see – uh, he should be the number one receiver there. Uh, Christian Kirk with DeAndre Hopkins still out. Uh, hopefully Kyler Murray's back. That will that will help Kirk's outlook as well. And then, of course, Michael Gallup, who gets a big boost, returned last week, played a decent amount of snaps. Now Amari Cooper is out. Gallup should be the number two behind CeeDee Lamb in the game we like the most on the entire week. Um, so I think, I mean, we have a handful, five, six, seven guys that you can pick from in that lower tier range. And that, that doesn't even include that sweet spot. 18 to 24 dollar range that we normally look to yep um yeah and i and i haven't even been looking in that range too much typically because the plays are so nice in the 15 16 dollar range and then the the higher end plays are so nice too um if it, but, it feels uh, sorry if it didn't rub it if it does feel like a a, a a a stars and scrubs week at receiver compared to what we normally do because i really only saw aj brown and hollywood in that middle range compared to all these other guys in the ranges you just mentioned. So Brown is like a lock to me for my main lineup. Brown is an absolute lock, right? Uh, last two weeks, he's had tough games, but that was against Ramsey and Lattimore right now. He gets a cupcake matchup. Uh, Julio Jones still out. No Derek Henry, obviously um, their running game is, you know, not very good at this point. Um, and, he should be able to beast against this uh, Texan secondary. Uh, Brandon Cooks makes for an easy run back. Um, and I think Brandon Cooks can have some success uh, in this game because I don't think that the Tennessee defense is that good. Um, they've just been in some good spots lately. Um, so Cooks, I, I can get behind. So that he's one of that 18 to 24 range. And, you know, um, Brown is 23. So that's right there. But other guys in that range, Let's see. Oh, man, I went down with Tyler Lockett last week. That's who was in my main lineup, too. Man, that was rough. Um, yeah. Um, no thank you on DJ Moore because I just can't see Cam. Uh, maybe, but I just feel like Cam is just going to take away more. It's just going to run more. And, and McCaffrey's coming on. So I just right. think it's the more days are over. Um, yeah, but the, 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 the range I love is the higher range, you know, I, I mean, I love Debo Samuel, yeah. um, 
number one in the league in yards per route run. I mean, he's just been ridiculous. They do designed run plays for him. Uh, he's 29. You can pair him cheaply with Jimmy G. Um, and it's just uh, the matchup that you like against Jacksonville. Um, I did bet the, the 49ers. I'm a little scared of it, but I did bet on them this week. Um, so I'm hoping that they, they, they show up here, even though they're uh, across the country in the early game. But I, I think they will. Uh, Devontae Adams is uh, the main decision for me. It's do I want to go with him or do I want to go Tyreek? Um, Tyreek is in the, the marquee game with the total. Uh, the high total pairs extremely well with Mahomes. But, um, you know, Devontae Adams is still – is just so consistent, right? Like, and the problem with him is that he just hasn't had the touchdowns. I do think they're coming um, in eight games with A-Rod this season, 84 targets. He's an elite, you know, weapon. The Vikings are number 17 in pass DVOA versus number one wide receivers. Patrick Peterson probably still out. Um, so – and he's smashed – not that it really matters, but he's smashed the Vikings – every time he plays them. So um, he's kind of the guy I probably want first. Um, but, uh, you know, you can make the, the case for Tyreek on me right now and change my mind pretty easily if you want to. I mean, it's it, the, the high-end range is so good this week. So you mentioned Debo, Devontae, Tyreek, right? And then Jamar Chase in, in that, that Raiders game. Stephon Diggs, um, you know, DK Metcalf, Justin Jefferson, CD Lamb now with Cooper out, even more targets. Yeah. So like lots of guys to choose from. Um, I mean, I, I love all of these guys and it's, it's really tough to, to narrow down which ones, I guess my question to you would be, um, as we move over to the running back position here in a second, because we do have some value running backs from the same teams as these guys, does that impact your decision at all? Like, let's say Jeff Wilson and Debo, do you have any problem playing them together or, or AJ Dillon and Devante together or in your main lineup, are you looking to, uh, to spread it out a little bit more? So in my main lineup. Uh, I mean, I pro I could probably convince myself to play Wilson and Debo together only in the main lineup because that's more like a cash driven, right. you know, it's 10 man contest. It does have some other, you know, there I do play GPP type contests, but they're usually smaller stuff like 20 man entries and stuff. So I could convince myself to do it. I would obviously I would probably shy away from it. Like I, it's not what I want to do but I could probably allow myself to do it just because of the price on Wilson. He doesn't need much. It's like one touchdown and you're, you're probably, you're, you're probably good. And he's got multi touchdown upside in this offense. Right. Um, especially with like lack of um, other, you know, they just showed no, no willingness to give the ball to Trey Sermon whatsoever. Um, <laughs> good draft pick. This season. Yeah. I mean, I drafted him high too. Um, but um, anyways, uh, and, but like for the for the baller, I'll probably make a rule. I think um, to to play one or the other, Wilson or Debo, because I probably won't. I, you know, I probably takes away from Debo's upside. You know, and Debo, you know, may get one of those designed run plays again, and that would take away from Jeff Jeff Wilson. So uh, to answer your question, in the big large field uh, baller, I would probably not play them together. But in my main lineup, I could do it. Probably okay. won't, but but may do it. Um, yeah. Um, so let's, let's segue over to running back. Cause there are a lot that we, I mean, we got stacked, stacked cheap plays again. So first one obviously is Jeff Wilson, Elijah Mitchell's out. He is going to be the lead back. Um, Just playing. Anybody, right? I, I would play head chopper behind this offensive line uh, in this offense with Shanahan uh, at running back, you know? So um you get you, you just play him in this situation in my opinion um, it's the same as the same as the earnest last week right you just i mean I, I get these questions every week and a lot of our content always focuses on it but just you get these cheap guys with volume and good offenses just in good rushing offense just just play them and do not worry about it yeah the earnest let me die i i, I went like 80 percent of him in the in the ball i went like super high with him in the in the ball i mean he and did fine yeah, he did um, fine. But I mean, in like the worst, lot. the worst game script possible, he scored what like seventeen Yahoo points or something. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. And like Mark Ingram, who I thought was a fade, that's the, just shows to show you when these guys are priced so cheaply down at like fourteen, it doesn't take much for them to right. to to you know, like I, I thought, like oh, I, going into like Dalvin is going to be this big separator for me, and it's like there was not any separation <laughs> really. Um, 
because it's just you know volume, and if they sneak in the end zone, then it's it's uh, yep. they're there. So um, okay, so I wrote him now. Miles Gaskin, um, I love. I'd play head chopper against the Jets at running back. Um, Eighteen dollars. Uh, Jets 31st DVOA versus the run. I mean, you can do whatever you want in this team. There's production to go around for everyone. Miles Gaskin um, will get, in my opinion, will get in the end zone um, at least once this week. Um, does have that bad offensive line that he runs behind. But, like, for all of his inefficiencies with uh, running, there's just not much competition behind him. And uh, this is a, a matchup where he should be extremely efficient in. So uh, I'll, I'll take him there. Um, I wrote down Michael Carter, but like the more I think about it, I'm probably going to end up fading Michael Carter, but there is good reasons to play him. 52% of the snaps, um, even though with uh, Tevin Coleman back 19 or more, more touches in three or four games, he's getting targets, six targets. The the question is, is Flacco going to check down um, as much as like a Wilson would? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, but um, who knows? Um, Mark Ingram is in play again at nineteen dollars, and uh, I'll leave the uh, the must play uh, for you to 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 mention in a minute. So AJ Dillon, as I assume we were yep. <laughs> discussing, yep. yeah, uh, yeah. So we get Dillon, uh, extremely affordable price. He only has to comp- compete with Patrick Taylor, uh, who I didn't even know was a person until last week. So yeah, it's it, easy must play him, Jeff Wilson, and then you have other guys, uh, uh, Gaskin, Carter. Mark Ingram, Dar- Daryl Williams. Um, if if Ceh isn't activated from the injured reserve, Daryl Williams is only fifteen dollars. Deontay Foreman, if you want a pivot, no Jeremy McNichols, just competing with Adrian Peterson against the Texans. Um, but to me, it's I mean, you just you just play Dylan, you play Jeff Wilson, and then the question to me, Chris, is this week do we play three value running backs? Or do you save that third spot for a stud running back? Because we do have Dalvin, Christian McCaffrey, who was pretty expensive on Yahoo. But um, I guess that that's the key question for me in a main lineup. Yeah, that was another 2v2 that I wrestled with was uh, Diggs McCaffrey versus Dalvin uh, Mike Williams. Oh, so oh, in God. Hindsight, it was the stupidest, <laughs> stupidest decision. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, McCaffrey's priced like I, I'm upset that they 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 jacked them up to 40. I was hoping like maybe he'd be like 32 bucks or 33, right. like they put him up like a, a dollar or two. Um, I think Jonathan Taylor. So the 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 on the high end we're talking here. So the Bills defense, yes, they're great, but they uh, Tremaine Edwards, I believe, will be out, and he's a run stuffer. And I think somebody else is out on that team. So oh uh, yeah, um, the defensive lineman star Lotulele. Yeah, so that helps too. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit better of a matchup and people are is probably aren't going to play him too much this week. So I think that makes for a good GPP play. James Connor, I went heavy on last week. Um, got a, you know, saved the day with a touchdown, I guess. Like he didn't kill you, but certainly didn't help your lineup playing him last week. And what was a great spot. He got a jacked up to $31. So he's going to be extremely low owned. He's got, you know, multi touchdown upside. That's that's what he has is multi touchdown equity. Um, you know, in two of his last three games, he's got two touchdowns uh, against Green Bay and against San Francisco. So um, certainly go there. And then we got like that twenty eight, twenty seven dollar range is mighty interesting because Dal- the the price drop on Dalvin yes. in what it could be a very good you know game with uh, Green Bay is certainly interesting. Green Bay, 24th DVOA versus the run. Um, he had six touchdowns in two games versus the Packers last year. It's just something I always remember is Dalvin against the Packers. Yeah. And so, um, and, you know, so take advantage of that lower price. So um, I will have a bunch of him. Um, I don't know what else to do from there. Um, you got any other guys? Uh, Zeke and Mixon, I guess, have to be mentioned. Nick Chubb is a 14 point yeah, favorite. Z- Z- Zeke in the marquee game for sure. Um, and uh, the price is, is somewhat reasonable. Uh, he was $34 last week. He's now in this marquee game with a 56 point total, and he's down to 28. So, certainly, um, interesting play there. Obviously, Pollard is not what we, you know, it does take away from. Every Pollard touch takes away from Zeke, but Zeke has that the end zone uh, equity, the the red zone equity. So, 
um, yeah, I could see that working out. Who else we got? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's there's just some easy plays. I think you just play those guys, and then you get all your different exposures to receivers. You know, mix in some of these stud running backs. It's again, it's just, it's AJ Dillon's Jeff Wilson. Figure out the rest because those guys are such good plays this week. Yep, uh, I totally agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's go over to the the wide receiver position. We wait. Did we? Sorry, Tight we ends. did the wide receiver tight end position. Sorry, uh, I'm feeling the cough here it threw me off. Um, I don't really care about tight end as <laughs> you per usual, but this week we're stacked. Uh, we've got on the high end. We've got Travis Kelsey for thirty bucks. Um, you know, used to be a higher price. He's definitely uh, regressed a little this season. People are saying, "Oh, is he old?" I think it's just been some crazy games that the Chiefs have been. A lot of turnovers and whatnot. But um, uh, I like him. Uh, George Kittle, I love. On the cheap end, we do have some plays. It's Dallas Goddard for 14. Uh, I had him last week in my main lineup, but he went down with that concussion right off the bat, which was uh, annoying. But uh, he's back this week, and uh, he's $14. I think that's uh, something a spot to take advantage of. Dan Arnold is kind of just like that safety, cheap, top value, eight target average over the last three weeks, 60 or more yards in each of those games. Um, I don't know. Uh, then we still got Waller. Who, who, who's, and then uh, Dalton Schultz obviously should get an uptick here um, with the uh, with Amari Cooper being out. But uh, who are you gravitating towards? Yeah, I was looking at the same guys, right? It's like, do you pay down and go to Goddard, <coughs> who's, who's way underpriced for his role, assuming he doesn't get concussed on the first play again? Dan Arnold, way too cheap. Or do you pay up for the studs, like you said, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Darren Waller, Mark Andrews? And that leads me to the last guy you mentioned, Dalton Schultz who obviously gets an uptick without Amari Cooper in the highest total game of the week, should go overlooked at that at that price point. Um, so he's my favorite tournament play for sure. But there's just so many guys. And it's, I mean, I think it's just, this is the position you fill in last and whoever fits your lineup the best. Because in addition to those guys, we also have Mike Kosicki against the Jets. Uh, we have uh, Dawson Knox in that Bills game. Like, there's, there's a bunch of guys that play this week. And like you, I'm not too thrilled to, to, to pick one guy from this position, I'd rather just wait to see how the rest of my lineup looks, fill it in last, because I think they're good options at every price point. Yeah. So like, it's kind of, I, I like, I kind of like a lot of tight end plays this week, which is, which isn't normal. So like you yeah. said um, that we got that range and then uh, Hawkinson, I have no faith in with uh, the QB situation going on right now. Um, so I probably won't have much of him. But like a guy like CJ Uzoma has like the nut matchup um, for for a tight ends against the the Raiders. But like it's kind of sticker shock to see him at seventeen dollars. This is a guy we you know would be you know we didn't really want to play at min price. But like right, right. he's he's rattled. He has he's had two massive games this season, and now he heads into this great matchup, and so provides a lot of leverage off of guys like T Higgins and. Uh, Tyler Boyd, who's min price, we didn't even mention that, and uh, I don't think, uh, you know, and, and Jamar Chase. So, like, you know, it wouldn't shock me if he rolls off a, a massive game. And then uh, and then Anthony Ferkser, who's, like, been dead and, like, not a part of this offense that we expect him to be. But, like, Jeff Swain is out this week. So, um, you know, they're, they don't have the, the run, rushing game weapons that they're used to. They Julio Jones is out again. So, like, it – you know, I could see Ferks are um, at least getting in the, the end zone for sure. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to, to play it this week. Kind of kind of feels like like going like 10 deep in my pool or something like that for, for tight ends. Yeah, I actually think going deeper than you usually would for, for this position is definitely the way to go. Because like like you said, normally we're, we're talking like, okay, we maybe like these two guys this week, but they're legit like 10 guys this week in the position. So, yeah, a lot of different ways to play it. Yep. All right. Let's close it out with uh, our favorite stacks um, on the, on the high end. I'm going to give, uh, you know, I don't, Aaron Rodgers is not going to be owned. Devante is going to be owned. Um, so I'm going to just make them an easy pairing uh, leverage off of the, the Dylan um, and hope uh, they go back to the, the last year, Aaron Rodgers and Devante Adams connection. And uh, you get a multi-touchdown game out of him. 
Um, maybe Rogers runs one in. Uh, that that'll be like uh, one of my favorites. And then uh, for a gross one, I don't even know. I don't even have it. I'm gonna leave it to you because you're you're going gross. Give give me your gross one that you said you you already uh, told me, already okay. alluded to. Okay. Well, I'll give you my my same leverage stack first, and that's that's the Dak Dak side of that game, right? With everyone going to be on the home side, we're going to get Dak less than ten percent. We got multiple weapons to pair him with. That is your your reasonable leverage GPP stack for your your bankruptcy hearing stack of the week. It's it's Tua yes. and 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 either Waddle or Gasicki running back with the Jet. Um, if you, I mean, if you, do we even have to run it back with a Jet? Probably not, honestly. Probably not. I th- but you I think can you- this week because you can. It's not like la- like last week. I literally, who who did the Jets play last week? Um, uh, the Jets played. Who did the Jets play last oh week? God, it was so long insane. ago, six whole days. I ago. know, I, and you know what? And, and and we've got NBA going on, so it's like it totally. My brain is just like mush. right. Um, hold on, I still sorry. can't remember. I'm actually still thinking. I don't know who they played last I'm looking, week. Looking, I'm looking it up. So. Uh, they they play Buffalo, so I ran just jo- single Josh Allen stats with no with no bring back. That was the only QB. That was the only QB game that I did no bring back with. Gotcha, gotcha, I gotcha. Think, uh, I think that that's in play every week that you don't have to bring it back with a jet until proven otherwise. But Michael Carter would be the guy for me probably. You could if, if you want. If you want to bring someone back, you could just play the Flacco side and then you bring it back with a dolphin, and then you then you uh, then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that is that okay enough to close out the show? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, everyone's gonna be rushing to make their Flacco lineups. I'm sure. Um, Lush and Prush, man. It was so great. Really interesting week. So, uh, all right. I hope you have a good week, man. Uh, I hope I do too. Uh, got uh, got all day to start uh, messing around with some stuff here and making uh, groups and whatnot. And uh, let's crush it this week. Let's do it. All right, uh, this has been the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast, Week 11 edition, and we'll be back next week. See you then. Thanks.